Okay, yes, it is most definitely about 105 degrees outside, but I am craving soup, specifically a grilled cheese and tomato soup. Mmm, yummy. Okay, it's been about like a year since I've made this on my channel and the recipe is kind of outdated, so I wanted to show you guys the newer version, the better version. Mmm, all right, let's make it. Okay, we're gonna start out in our Dutch oven. You can use any pan. I'm just gonna add a little bit of, this is the Aldi like infused olive oil. You can use regular. I love that olive oil, but then again, kind of hate it because these bigger chunks of like dried tomato, sun-dried tomato kind of burn if you don't pay attention to them. So that's kind of annoying. Anyway, regular olive oil. Then I'm gonna add one large because I'm obsessed with onion. This is probably almost even like an extra large, like a Costco sized onion. That's what you'd want here. Feel free to use less, you girl just really loves it. Then I'm just gonna add a touch more oil. This definitely looks like, a, like it is a lot of onions. Okay, it looks like way more just because of how small the pot is. Probably could have used a bigger one. And also shout out to my mom for this little pot. I love it. Apparently in my last video, she didn't hear that I gave her a shout out and told her thank you. So mom, if you're watching this, thank you for my pot. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let this cook out for about 10 minutes. I do wanna get these super caramelized and like jammy like in a sense almost. If anything, we just wanna get them soft and just cooked out at least five minutes. Then once our onions look super nice and jammy, I'm gonna go ahead and add six cloves of garlic, give or take, maybe a little bit more. Garlic is just ugh, so good and it's good for you. Then we can just give that a brief stir. I'm gonna turn the heat down to low now. Of course, we do not want to burn the garlic. You can burn the onions and be eh, pretty okay with that, but when it comes down to burning the garlic, nope. There is, you can't even reuse the pot after. You definitely have to wash everything out because it just makes it taste terrible. I'm not saying that I haven't done it before, but okay, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna turn the heat to low. Then we can take three tablespoons, give or take, kind of like a bit more. It just adds to the richness of this, of some tomato paste. Definitely would not swap. Okay, that's more like a quarter cup, which is like four tablespoons. So just go for it. But for this, you most definitely want the tomato paste. Tomato sauce is just watery. And I mean, you would have to cook it out so much for it to even get to this consistency. So a little can of tomato paste is what you want. Like I always, always say, some of you guys probably already know, say it with me. You need to cook out the tomato product because it has the one metallic -y taste, but two, it's not sweet yet because it's been sitting in a can and it hasn't had the chance to well, hit the heat and sweeten up. So we're just gonna keep smashing this and see how it's almost, it's still a paste, definitely. It's not a liquid, but it's a lot thinner than it was when it was in the can. And we're still over a medium heat. Then once that's cooked out, we can turn the heat up to a medium and we can add in our 28 ounce can of crushed, ooh, crushed and diced tomatoes. I know somebody's gonna give me a tip to pour it over like a spoon or something. But you know, Amber just lives for making a mess. Maybe that's where Roman gets it from. <laughs> so we're just gonna fold all of this together. And so, okay, could you use completely crushed tomatoes? Absolutely, that's what I would definitely recommend for this. But if you guys saw my grocery haul from like last month, I got a bunch of those cans on sale for like 75 cents, which is so rare. So I bought every single one of them that they had. <laughs> But the diced tomato portion of it just kind of gives it a little bit of like viscosity and just thickness. Rachel Ray, thank you for that word, viscosity. Um, but yeah, it just kind of helps with the texture. So it's not just like a liquid soup. If you guys know anything, Brad hates liquid soup. He feels like it's just water. And while this is heating up, we can go ahead and add our spices. I definitely could have added the spices to kind of toast them and bloom them before, but your girl just forgot and it's okay. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of garlic powder a teaspoon of onion powder. And I know we already have fresh garlic and onion. This gives such a different flavor that you won't get from fresh. Teaspoon of rosemary. Should be a teaspoon of parsley, but I definitely need to get more. Teaspoon of oregano. And about a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of some crushed red pepper flakes. Teaspoon of basil. And about a teaspoon of some salt. And just a little black pepper because why not? 
Then we can give all the spices. I like to kind of lift upwards first before just like dunking them in there because that's kind of how you get lumps. And then just fold it in. And just pray that you don't get lumps. And if you do, better will be delicious. Okay, mixy, mixy. And another thing, so if you guys obviously make my Rayo's pasta sauce, you can use that or even any jar of pasta sauce that you have. And the last, well, second to last step, we're gonna add a heavy cream to it. So of course that would still be keto. Um, but I do not add, oh, here comes baby Roman. He's gonna tell you guys. <laughs> I do not add sugar to my pasta sauce because I let my tomatoes naturally sweeten by cooking it out. Now, if I had literally five minutes and I just couldn't, then you would add some sugar. But to me, it just gives a very artificial sweetness rather than like a natural hint of sweetness. I don't want to feel like I'm having a sweet, savory dinner, if that makes any sense. I want to feel like I'm having something that's naturally sweetened, like a piece of fruit or something. But of course, this is still very, very thick. I mean, you could definitely, well, for one, pour this over pasta, but we wanna thin it out because, ooh, is this gonna be hot? Because it is a soup. So I have some of my homemade chicken bone broth. Yes, it has little pieces in there, but that is all natural. We're gonna add one cup of either water or broth. Feel free to add some bouillon if you're using water. Should Amber have used a bigger pot? Yes. Now at this point, you can definitely taste for seasoning. Now, of course, if it is not as sweet as you would like it now, which it definitely shouldn't be because we haven't cooked it out long enough. Taste for seasoning at this point and you can season now or later if you like, but wait, if you feel like you wanna add sugar, which I don't know why you would, but if you feel like you do, definitely give this at least 10 to 15 minutes to cook with a lid on or even some aluminum foil on top because you do not want a giant mess. Okay, wait, so we're just gonna add the lid slightly off just so that some of the steam can escape because I don't want this to become watery. If anything, I will add more chicken broth in the end, but I think this is pretty good. And I like my tomato soup a little bit thicker. So after about like 15, ooh, it's kind of hot. After about 15 to 20 minutes, this is what our sauce looks like. Also definitely pretend I did not just say sauce. This is what our tomato soup looks like. Now remember, if you like yours thinner, feel free to add a bit more chicken broth. I like mine thicker, so I think this is perfect. Now, the last step to this, a little bit of heavy cream. We're gonna add about a half of a cup. Usually I would temper it and like add it in slowly, but you girl's just hungry. And you do not want to add your heavy cream in way like in the beginning. You want to wait till you are finally done and you are just about to serve because you don't want to boil heavy cream. Like you just don't. When it's mixed into something already, then you can always heat it up, but you definitely don't want to boil it. Okay, this almost looks like a vodka sauce, but this is the way I like my tomato soup to look. All right, now we can work on our grilled cheese and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so the reason I put air quotes around grilled cheese is because I just looked in my pantry and I have a couple of tortillas, a couple of tortillas. <laughs> okay, so the reason I put air quotes around our grilled cheese is because I just looked in the pantry and I have literally like three or four tortillas left and I figured, let's make a quesadilla. It is the same thing except for without a piece of bread. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil Okay, I stand corrected. I only have three tortillas, but I'm just gonna coat it with a little bit of olive oil just to help with the crispness. Nice and coated. Then I'm just gonna heat this up and we're gonna add our cheese, working over a medium heat. Now the key to a quesadilla, either you can do one tortilla and flip it over, or you can do the one where you just put another tortilla on top. But considering the fact that I only have three tortillas, we're just gonna do the folded version. I just have a regular block of cheddar, but first, yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna take my block of cheddar and just start grating it. I can't really tell you exactly how much or how little cheese you want, because it's really up to how you like it. Now, I know everyone's gonna talk about the oil that is going to spill out from it. It's just what happens whenever you melt real cheese. If I were using like an American cheese or something like that in like a little cling film package, then you might not get that, but it's just real tree, real trees, real cheese. Feel free to, I don't know, kind of drain it off, rinse it off. It's up to you, but like I said, still going to taste good. Probably we'll have to add a little bit more cheese because that is me. It's so funny because whenever my parents see me making anything, not see me, but whenever I send them pictures of what I'm making or they watch my YouTube videos, they're like, Amber, you like hate cheese. 
I'm not the type of person that likes to add cheese on top of things very like if I do it's very rare and it's because I feel like it needs it with a quesadilla I don't mind eating cheese I know that sounds really weird and I'm giving you guys way more information than you guys want because you guys are just here to see the food not learn about my life but those of you guys that care I don't know kind of like iffy on cheese as far as adding it into things anyway you can already see that the bottom cheese ish is starting to melt so now we are going to take a whenever you are using a nonstick pan please use silicone it's actually cheaper to buy than plastic utensils literally the dollar store carries them okay you're going to need to add more cheese because this is going to be like so tortilla-y okay now i've added more cheese we're good we're just gonna take this i'm pretty sure literally all of you guys know how to make a quesadilla but for those of you guys that don't or what just want to see how i make it this is how we do it then it's all about heat management and as far as flipping it over you don't want to cook it on one side for too long but then you also don't want to not give it long enough i like to do it open first and like i said this is that pool of oil we were talking about but it's okay just flavor those of you guys that like a crunchy cheesy layery end there's a free coat that's what it's called if you guys like that feel free to add cheese even to the bottom of the pan only on a non-stick if you do this in any other pan you are going to hate me because it is going to stick to your pan and you you're better off just throwing that in the trash but you can also kind of just lightly press it out and all of that's going to start to get nice and crispy Ooh, okay so you just want to check on it and of course depending on how high your heat is how hot your pan is and you will get a little bit of stringiness feel free to kind of just tuck this in and flip see this is the exact color we we're going for typically whenever i make a quesadilla i never use oil or butter or anything i just kind of let the tortilla do its thing but when you want nice crispiness you need some type of fat oil butter however even if it's not olive oil vegetable oil it works okay i mean tomato soup a quesadilla. I am so ready to eat. 